as you heard, lakes which were full of sewage were frothing and sometimes on fire are now slowly being cleaned up thanks to the effort of the state, the judiciary, and of civil society. These lakes, when they are clean and full of water, provide biodiversity habitat, but also recharge the groundwater. Groundwater in Bangalore is a complex story. On hard rock, the city has drilled more than 400,000 bore wells and is perhaps using anywhere between 400 million liters to 700 million liters per day. Managing the groundwater is a big challenge. Let's see who are the players and what they are doing to understand, recharge, and manage groundwater. My name is Himanshu Kulkarni. I work for an organization called Advanced Center for Water Resources Development and Management, Aquadam for short. Aquadam works on the science of groundwater and essentially on the goal of bringing communities as close as possible to their aquifers. I've been working in the field of groundwater for the last 35 years. And uh, as a part of this journey, as 22 years with Aquatan. Uh, I think the question of urban groundwater is uh, going to increasingly haunt us, especially in countries like India, as urban uh, growth um, is evident in most small and large uh, towns and cities. Bangalore is, of course, a typical case. You know, Bangalore is underlain by a typical crystalline uh, rock geology, granitic, nisic rocks, uh, which show a typical weathering and fracturing pattern. These are very, very old rocks, a uh, uh, couple of billion years old, and therefore they have been weathered, they have been uh, fractured, they have been subjected to various stresses. So you actually, you know, Bangalore sits on these crystalline rocks and the weathering and fracturing patterns in these crystalline rocks lead to the formation of aquifers. Large parts of Bangalore are essentially, can be, can be divided into shallow and deep aquifers. And because these systems often result in various permutations and combinations of weathering, fracturing, and also some deformation in the rock that further gives rise to various fracturing patterns. You get formation of aquifers at different depths. And for example, in, 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 in the area of Sarjapura, there's an increasing uh, thickness of weathering, the sort of shallow weathering uh, system from uh, the south to the north. So even the uh, weathering sort of patterns tend to change uh, locally. Again, in that area, in the Sarjapura Road area, we've been able to identify uh, vertically, uh, in a vertical section, something like five to six different aquifers tapped by differently sized bow wells, uh, you know, tapped by bow wells, well, dug wells and bow wells that span a depth of almost uh, 400 to 500 meters. And that gives rise to groundwater conditions. Of course, uh, these groundwater conditions tend to vary significantly both laterally and vertically. I think in a situation like this, where there's also a development of groundwater resources at different depths, and Bangalore, of course, has gone through a significant uh, history over the last 40, 50 years, from tapping very, very shallow sources, mostly the large diameter dug wells, which were there for hundreds of years, to extremely deep bore wells, 1,800, 2,000 uh, feet. Um, one needs to carefully look at the management of groundwater, both at community levels, because groundwater typically is a common pool resource. So unless the users of groundwater come together, decide on an approach to use that groundwater on an approach to manage that groundwater, on an approach to recharge that groundwater, it will be a resource that will continue to come under competition and conflict. And I think the, the city uh, system of governance, or even the state for that matter, must also facilitate this move towards community-based participatory groundwater management 
based on the science of aquifers, based on understanding how these aquifers behave in space and time, and also bring in some sort of a structure whereby we are able to combine what can be done at individual levels of households to larger uh, scale uh, uh, efforts, say at the watershed, micro watershed scale, or even at a larger river basin scale, or even at a city scale, in involving public systems, public systems of recharge, for example, large scale recharge. Uh, also, some sort of a protocol in terms of how one operates wells, how one comes up with recharge, decentralized recharge structures, wastewater uh, uh, management and treatment, and possibly also in terms of some sort of a regulatory framework, uh, which is more facilitative than uh, command and control. And I think all of this together will lead to a better management of urban aquifers, especially in a city like Bangalore. Hi, I'm Shalini Sushil. I work with Mapsas Trust, a trust that takes care of five large lakes in the Sajapur Belandur area of Bangalore City. The other problem that came in along, along with this was the seepage that began to hamper my neighbors in the community. We did a survey about five years ago and we realized that a lot of people were having water entering their homes, specifically the basements. A few of them used to have water coming into their ground floors as well. Biome came into the picture at that time and they have been our knowledge partners and they have worked with us uh, very much. Along with Biome, Vakwadam has helped us do a hydrogeological study and we found to our joy that we are living on a, on a lake catchment area since we have about four other lakes within a two kilometer radius of our homes. With the lake catchment area comes a stream crisscross of aquifers, shallow, unconfined aquifers that run right below our feet. And these have been the heart of the problem. So whether they remain a boon or they remain a, become a bane for us is our choice. With Biome, we have been able to dig 34 odd recharge wells in the community, plus three large community withdrawal wells, which have been yielding water for the last five years. Last year, we've been able to meter these three community wells, and we find that they have been yielding for roughly about seven months in a year, and on an average, about 6,000 liters of water. Today, we are in the process of metering our 20-odd personal wells that are there within the personal individual sites of the owners of the layout. And with this, we hope to be able to map out the complete yield of water that is coming from this source. Some of the challenges that we have had and we continue to have in this journey is that while we are extremely eager to complete our initiative of rainwater harvesting and recharging the groundwater, there are a couple of questions that come right up on our faces. The first one has been the biggest problem is that the owners find their homes getting marooned with water and as a result of which this particular part of water is not welcomed. We are, we find, in a very unique situation because we don't know of any other community that is located in the lake catchment area as we are and has been able to complete, complete its rainwater harvesting and groundwater <laughs> initiative, recharge initiative. To compound the problem, aquifers are not recognized as recognized sources of water by the BWSSB, as a result of which there are certain ROI questions that come up vis-a-vis -vis bore wells. While bore wells are quick fix solutions and they produce n mass amount of water in a short period of time, our withdrawal wells don't fit into that category. One of the things that we find now is that as a community, we need to be able to explore, we need to experiment, we need to pause, we need to learn from our observations and then amend our growth, our trajectory, or then continue on our growth towards the rainwater harvesting initiative completely. Uh, hopefully, we will be successful in what we intend to do. And uh, thanks to Biome and uh, other associates for helping us out on this venture.